What's going on, all you wild wrestling enthusiasts out there? It's the ultimate warrior, my good mate over there. I'm Uncle Henry Hill, and this is my brother. <laughs> That's right. These two wrestling fanatics are back once again for Cinefels. We're doing another movie review tonight, and one of the most anticipated films of the year, A24 films. Uh, we're going to be talking about and diving into off the top ropes. Of course, we're talking about The Iron Claw that just hit cinemas everywhere, written directed by Sean Durkin. The Iron Claw. You push it too hard. I'm fine, Kev. Seriously, I'm just saying I'm scared, man. You don't know how to control. What a terrible accident. I should have stopped him. I need to think about my family. Your job is to wrestle. Live up to that deal, or we are through. I told you to look out for you. I just love being out there with you guys. It's the only thing that matters to me. The And that's right. We have Zach Efron leading this all-star cast uh, about the Von Erich family, the wrestling family first started by the father played by Holt McElhaney, Fritz Von Erich had always um, aspired to be the champion of the world. He wanted to be the heavyweight champion. Fritz Von Erich, he set out to be the world champion in uh, wrestling and it didn't really pan out that way. And it really sets up, you know, the aftermath of that, having a family, uh, four boys, and um, growing up in the small Texas town where they become, he basically trains them to become the legends in wrestling and take the world by storm and essentially seek after the world championship, the title that he couldn't get. Yeah, he has all boys in his family, and he's grooming them basically to become the next generation of wrestlers. Uh, Kevin, played by Zach Efron, is the most, you know, looks just like a wrestler, like you pictured back in the 80s, has the body of a Greek god, is obviously on all the steroids in the world, is always working out. And the only thing that's holding him back from superstardom, really, is he's not that great behind the, behind the mic. You know, when he gets on the mic and he has to cut a promo, he just doesn't have it. It shows him recording a promo there. Uh, towards the beginning of the movie, and he just has to go take after take. He just can't sell it. He can't sell him being this superstar. And that's where his other brother, David, really, really, you know, stepped up to the podium and had that personality, had that swagger, really had it all. And looks, you know, based on the first part of the movie, looked like he was going to be the superstar because he had the personality and the in-ring in presence to match and to propel him forward. But this is the story of the Von Erich family. And if you know anything or didn't know anything like either of us did, you learn that basically the family, so many bad things happen to this family. It's just, it seems like they're cursed. And these brothers are having to go against, you know, something else that's keeping them back here. It seems that the family's cursed. Something's always going wrong at each and every turn. Yeah, that's right. They really kind of dive into, you know, the curse behind this. As you said, we're not familiar. I remember one of the Von Erichs wrestling back in the day when I watched it, um, but the rest of the family I wasn't really familiar with, so it's cool how they dived into that. But the curse essentially happens. Their real last name is not Von Erich. They go ahead and change it, and then that's when things start happening, bad things start happening. They think it's tied to that. And uh, Kevin's character, played by Zach Efron, he kind of changes that up throughout the film when he has children, but that really has to go down to the name change and you know one by one the brothers end up essentially dying off in different ways but it all started with their oldest brother uh he was super young he died as a kid and then you know throughout the rest of the film you find out what happens to the rest of the brothers yeah and this film is takes place mainly in the 70s and 80s and it has the soundtrack to accompany that on screen there's some cool needle drops throughout the film that really bring you into this time period along with these characters and a lot of great scenes together with the brothers. That's what worked so well for me for this movie was the bond that these brothers had. It always seems like they were always together, always rooting for each other, always had each other's backs. And when things were going wrong, they were trying to help each other out. They'd always, you know, mess around with each other like brothers would and pick on each other and fight. But at the end of the day, they had each other's backs and were always there for each other. And, you know, when one tragic thing happens to one of the brothers, it really takes so much out of the whole group of the brothers. You know, they 
get all this success working together and then they just have a setback and it'll just bring them back back to square one um in the movie we have jeremy allen white as carrie where first he is a you know trying out for the olympics uh i believe in discus um he throws a disc and he's really good uh but right at that time period that was when the uh Cold War was happening, so he wasn't able to go to Russia because the president at the time, Jimmy Carter, said, you know, we're not going to be involved in this. We're not going to um, be involved in the Olympics at this time and, you know, give the Soviets attention that they shouldn't have. Or we're not going to have our athletes go. So he didn't get to go to the Olympics. And that's why it takes about a, at least an hour for this movie before you see Jeremy Allen White. And I remember talking to you about that. And I was like, you know, I didn't know Jeremy Allen White was going to be in this movie at first because it took for took a while for him to show up because he wasn't in the wrestling world at first. But once he came in, he really, uh, you know, he shined in the spotlight. He had the long hair. And of course, Jeremy Allen White having a killer year and a killer few years with the bear really doing amazing work acting wise. And here is none the different. He really plays Carrie very well. Him and Kevin are uh, really tight. And of course, David too. The three of them are really uh, close knit and they have to work together to work on Carrie's in-ring wrestling work because he's not from this world. So he doesn't really know the ins and outs and the tricks of the wrestling trade. You know, going off what you're saying. Yeah. Jeremy Allen White doesn't show up for like maybe 30, 45 minutes into the movie. And I forgot that he was in it <laughs> as you're saying, you know, they kind of dive into that him joining the wrestling world with his brothers and training and, and becoming a really badass wrestler. And Jeremy Allen White really looks the part. He had the long hair. He's all ripped. He put on a lot of muscle mm -hmm. like Efron. Like they look like legit wrestlers and the, the pain they go through um, just because of their dad. Wanting for them to be champions, like always hard on them and training constantly, and they're never good enough. Always getting berated. Sounds mm -hmm. sounds uh, familiar <laughs> <laughs> but throughout the film. But Jeremy Allen White showing up as Carrie was really great. David is played by Harris uh, Dickinson. He was really great. And the youngest brother, Mike, played by Stanley Simmons. So those are the four brothers. And when they're all wrestling together, taking on you know, big name wrestlers back in the 70s and 80s, you'll see some yeah. people show up along the way and they're really badass together. And you can see how, you know, the Von Eric brothers are forced to be reckoned with. Absolutely. The choreography and the wrestling in-ring action feels really authentic. And that's due to the fact that they hired, you know, several well-known wrestlers to help them with the in-ring stuff. So it looks really authentic. It looks like what you'd expect to see uh, back in the, you know, 70s and 80s of wrestling in the big heyday, you know, they really sell it. And you can tell that, you know, all these actors really put in the work to look authentic. It looks great. It looks authentic. It doesn't look cheesy at all. It looks like they've been wrestling for a while. And that lends to the authenticity of this movie. And that's really what makes it work. You get so invested in this family. And as one tragedy after the other hits the family, it really hits you deep. It really takes a toll on you. This isn't an easy movie to watch. This is, you know, super tragic what happens to this family. And really, you know, Zach Efron's performance, especially with Kevin, the way he keeps everything on the inside. And then, you know, by the end of the film, you see him finally show the toll that it took, man. That really uh, hit on my heartstrings and really, uh, you know, took home this movie for me being one of my favorites of the year. Not an easy watch. Pretty depressing what happens. But, uh, you know, very well written and very well acted. Yeah, this is not a feel good movie. Very depressing, as you said. That's how I felt. You know, the first hour's good. And then the last hour's not so good. Shit hits the fan pretty quickly, one by one. And you feel for Kevin, played by Zach Efron. What a powerhouse performance. One of Efron's best for sure to date. I thought he really killed it in this movie. Definitely the best performance. And everything he goes through the grief, the mental health issues, family you know, trying to make a paycheck, you know, he goes through a lot of different things and comes out on top, I would say, and a really great and satisfying and emotional ending to the film. And, you know, the rest of the cast of the brothers are really great. They all had a great uh, dynamic and chemistry together. The whole family lifestyle was not good growing up by this piece of shit father that, Man. you know, was chasing after this championship in the wrestling world for them to be the best, them to be legends. And it didn't really turn out that way due to the curse and a uh, really great performance by Holt Kelleny. Now for Mindhunter, great guy, you know, great actor. He always plays a good bad guy and he was really fantastic in this. And it's definitely a movie you guys check out in theaters. It's it's good. Um, you know, it's worth a viewing. So that being said, I'm going to give the Claw, now playing in theaters, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Jeremy Allen White hair pieces.
Yeah, it's it's really a good movie. I enjoyed it a lot, even though it's it's a tough watch. It's not very uplifting, even though the the last scene I liked there it showed a little bit of hope for the the family of the Von Erichs. Uh, worth mentioning, Maura Tierney as Doris Von Erich, the mom. She really showed a lot. You know, she, uh, not a lot of lines, but she showed a lot just in her eyes and her expressions when dealing with her husband. You know, Fritz. You know, the two of them worked very well together, and Holt uh, McElhaney this performance being a big um, role in this movie. I thought he did a really great job as the father really portrayed that very well. Yeah. Just everything about this movie is really top notch. The writing, the acting, the performance, the way it was directed, Sean Durkin, writer and director, great job. And uh, I expect to see this movie get a lot of attention during the award season. So with that being said, I am going to give the iron claw. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Rick Flair hair pieces. Woo! Woo! Yeah, Rick Flair showing up, man. That was painful. <laughs> Whatever actor yeah. played that uh, Rick Flair. Yes, it there was. was that like was bad. Him. No, nothing like that him. was absolutely. That's something that I noticed too. I was like, yeah, this wasn't a great Rick Flair at all. And I saw some other people saying the same thing. So I want to hear from all you crazy Ultimate Warrior enthusiasts out there. What did you like about the Iron Claw? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite wrestling movie? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to stay up. Subscribe. Also check out these wild Ric Flair impersonators on Facebook, X, and Instagram and our website, cinefels.com for latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. So thank you guys so much for watching our review of the Iron Claw. We want to hear from you all after you watch it. So please leave a comment after you watch it. So until the next Cinefellas movie review, I'm Uncle Henry Hogan. And I'm Uncle Logan Flair signing out until the next movie review. Cheers. <laughs>